government employees cannot go on strike affecting normal life employees will not get protection under article 19 clause 1 kerala high court gave its verdict rbi will issue sovereign green bonds nris will be able to invest under fully accessible route it was announced in the budget of 2022 23 America approves first B vaccine. The aim is to save from the American fowl brood disease. Biotech company Dalan Animal Health made the vaccine. The ozone hole is expected to fill up by the year 2066. Became possible because of the Montreal Protocol. The SAOD report claims. And. Manual scavenging is not stopping in India. 989 personnel killed in 29 years. Social Awareness Society for Youth disclosed. Recently, the Kerala High Court ordered the Kerala government to take action against government employees. This order has been given against those employees who participated in the two-day strike in the month of March last year. The court said that the government can take action against any government employee involved in the strike under the Kerala Service Rules and the Kerala Government Servants Conduct Rules. In this case, the court reiterated its earlier order that if a public servant participates in a strike which affects normal life and the public exchequer, he would not be entitled to protection under liable under Article 19, Clause 1, Sub Clause C of the Constitution. According to the court under the guise of fundamental rights under article 19 clause 1 sub clause C workers or unions have no legal right to appeal for a general strike or to incite employees to strike the court made this remark while hearing a petition filed in the matter the petition alleged that the kerala government has facilitated the strike by allowing paid leave instead of restraining the employees participating in the strike Significantly the Kerala High Court in the year 2021 in G Balagopalan versus the state of Kerala held that the employees of the state government are not entitled to participate in the strike for your information let us tell you that the right to freedom of speech and expression has been given in article 19 of the Indian constitution according to clause 1 sub clause C of article 19 Indian citizens have the right to form unions or cooperative societies in India Along with this, the state also has the right to impose appropriate restrictions on it. Clause four of Article Nineteen states that the state may impose reasonable restrictions in the interest of the sovereignty and integrity of India, or public order, or morality. Thus, the right to protest is a fundamental right under Article Nineteen of the Indian Constitution, but the right to strike is not a fundamental right, but a legal right. Recently civil groups protested outside the governor's house in Mizoram. The protesters demand that Kukichin refugees from Bangladesh be allowed entry to the state. According to them the people of the Kukichin community are not safe in Bangladesh. There they are being tortured. In such a situation they should be given asylum on humanitarian grounds. In this case Rajya Sabha member from Mizoram K Vanlal Vena also says that preventing kuki chin from entering india would be discrimination on the basis of caste this is because thousands of displaced chakmas from bangladesh were allowed in the 1970s after this they settled in mizoram and arunachal pradesh actually there is an armed conflict going on in bangladesh between the bangladeshi army and the kuki chin national army this struggle is taking place in the cht that is chittagong hill tract of bangladesh Due to this struggle more than 200 people from the Kukichin community entered Mizoram last November. Here they reached the South Longtlail district of Mizoram. Thereafter relief was provided to them on humanitarian grounds by the district administration and NGOs. But even after this they continue to come to India from Bangladesh. KNA that is Kukichin National Army is a rebel group. This group is active in Chittagong Hill Tracts. This group emerged in the year 2008. Its aim is to establish a separate state for the Kukichin Mizo community. This group is also supported by Myanmar's CNA that is Chin National Army Group. 
Mizoram and the border areas of Bangladesh and some parts of Myanmar are inhabited by the Kukichil Mizo community. These communities historically share a cultural heritage. All of them are believed to have originated from the same dynasty, that is Chinese origin. Later they came to India via Tibet, Myanmar. A large population of these communities also live in Mizoram, India. This is the reason why these Mizoram civic groups are demanding their entry into India. On the other hand, Zoro, that is Zo Reunification Organization is a Mizoram based organization fighting for the reunification of the Kukichin Mizo tribes of India. Myanmar and Bangladesh, it is also demanding the entry of these communities into Mizoram. For your information, let us tell you that India is not a signatory to the 1951 Refugee Convention or its 1967 Protocol. Along with this, India also has no domestic policy on the matter of refugees. Despite this, India continues to host a large number of refugees from neighbouring countries. According to media reports, the US will provide financial assistance for the conservation and restoration of the Paigah tomb in Hyderabad. This was announced by Jennifer Larson, US Commercial Envoy in Hyderabad. Prior to the announcement, Larson also visited the historic mausoleum. According to Larson, this is the fifth such project in India, funded by the AFCP, that is, the American Ambassador's Cultural Conservation Fund. This project will be implemented by the Aga Khan Trust for Culture. For the protection of this mausoleum, the US government will give an aid amount of about 20 crore rupees. The consulate said in a statement that it is proud to be a part of the Telangana government's efforts to preserve these magnificent monuments. For your information, let us tell you that Paiga tomb is related to the royal family of Paiga. The royal family is also known as Shams ul Umrahi family. They claim to be the descendants of Hazrat Umar bin al Khattab, the second caliph of Islam. The Amirs or Rais of Paiga were considered wealthier than the average Maharajas of the country. These were nobles who had the privilege of maintaining their own courts and palaces. Along with this, they had their own private armies. These nobles were called the right hands of the Nizam of Hyderabad. From the time of the second Nizam of Hyderabad, these Paigas were given the responsibility of protecting and defending the region. Significantly, Paiga is a Persian word. It means foot post. Paiga tomb is located near Santoshnagar, Hyderabad. It is about 4.5 kilometers from Charminar. It is also known as Magbara Shams ul Umra. Its construction was started in 1787 by Nawab Teg Jang Bahadur. Later, this construction was done by his son Amir A. Kabir Pratham. Thus, this mausoleum was built in the 18th and 19th centuries. Several generations of Paigas are buried in the historic mausoleum. It is also famous for its architectural design. The mausoleum is decorated with lime marbles and shows a mixture of Greek, Persian, Mughal, Rajasthani, Asif Jahi and Deccani architecture. In this way, this mausoleum is an excellent specimen from the architectural point of view. For your information, let us tell you that AFCP, that is American Ambassador's Cultural Conservation Fund, was created by the US State Department in the year 2001. Its purpose is to demonstrate respect for American values and other cultures. So far, through this fund, financial assistance has been provided to more than 1,100 projects in about 133 countries around the world. In India, the United States has invested more than $2 million over the past two decades for the documentation and preservation of 23 major historical sites and intangible heritage. Recently, RBI announced that it will issue a sovereign green bond in the current financial year. These bonds will be issued in two installments. The total value of these bonds will be Rs. 16,000 crore. According to RBI, the first auction of these bonds will be worth 8,000 crore rupees. This auction has been kept on 25th January. In this, there will be sovereign green bonds of Rs. 4,000 crore for 5 years and the remaining Rs. 4,000 crores for 10 years. 5% of the notified amount of the issue will be reserved for retail investors. These bonds will be eligible for repo. In this way, they can be bought or sold in the secondary market. Also, RBI says that these bonds will also be considered as an eligible investment for statutory liquidity ratio purposes. At the same time, 
immigrants will be able to invest in it under the fully accessible route. Let us tell you that there is no limit on foreign investment in listed securities under the fully accessible route. It has been told in the press release issued by the central bank that according to the announcement made in the budget 2022-2023, the central government is going to issue these bonds as part of its total market borrowing. In November 2022, the government released the framework for sovereign green bonds. The government had stated that the sovereign green bond would be used to raise resources for green infrastructure. The amount raised from this will be invested in public sector projects. Significantly, for the current financial year, market borrowings have been estimated to be at a record level of Rs 14.21 lakh crore. For your information, let us also tell you that green bonds are issued by any sovereign entity, intergovernmental groups and corporates. Their objective is to raise money from the market for environmentally sustainable projects. In this way, their objective is to raise investment for such projects, which can help in reducing the carbon footprint. These projects are mainly related to renewable energy, clean transportation and sustainable water management. It is noteworthy that green bonds were launched by the European Investment Bank and the World Bank in the year 2007. Recently, there has been news of lava coming out of the Kilauea volcano located in the Hawaiian Islands. According to USGS, that is the United States Geological Service, it is likely to explode soon. Earlier, this volcano erupted in September 2021, then after about 16 months, it calmed down. Experts say that till now, the community living here has not suffered any kind of damage due to its eruption. USGS warns that high volumes of volcanic smoke can be dangerous as they settle downside. As a result, elements such as sulfur dioxide from volcanic smog in the environment, which is hazardous to human health. Other hazards include Paley's hair, which can damage the skin and eyes. These are actually thin glass fibers known as Paley's hairs. They are named after the volcano god Pele. They are formed by the deposition of flowing lava. The length of Pele's hair can be up to a few feet long, but its thickness is only 1 micron, that is 0.001 mm. A volcano is a process under which the gas, lava, stone pieces and other substances present inside the earth come out through a hole. But when these substances are inside the earth, it is called magma. But as soon as these substances come out of the earth, they are called lava. Let us tell you that this volcano is located in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park on the southeastern part of the island of Hawaii, USA. The western and northern slopes of this volcano converge with Mauna Loa, another major volcano located here. It is one of the most active volcanoes of the world. Recently, the US government has approved the use of the world's first vaccine involving bees. Its purpose is to protect bees from American fowl brood disease. Along with this, the number of deaths of bees has to be brought down. The vaccine has been prepared by the American biotech company Dallin Animal Health. Right now, the vaccine has been conditionally approved for commercial use only. According to experts, this disease originated in America, but at present, this disease has spread its foot almost all over the world. Actually, AFB, that is American Fowl Brood, is an infectious disease related to beehives. This disease is caused by the spore-forming bacteria Penibacillus larva. This disease affects the larvae of bees. This infection occurs when the larva or pupa of the bees is developing. The bacterium is able to survive in the environment for many years. This infection can affect the whole hive, including healthy bees. However, the larva is more susceptible to infection than the adult bee. When a larva becomes infected with AFP, it stops feeding and eventually dies. Later, the infected larva disintegrates into a brown, sticky substance. As a result, it is easy to identify with its pungent odor. According to experts, the decreasing number of bees can have a negative impact on the food chain in the coming times. Researchers have found a way to mix this vaccine with sugar cake. They say that it will be kept in the hive in which the queen bee lives. As a result, after eating, its bacteria comes out in the form of a bee egg. According to scientists, 
it is difficult to eliminate American fowl brood completely. In such a situation, destroying the hives or finding and eliminating the infected parts can be a better solution. Recently, the Scientific Assessment of Ozone Depletion 2022 report has been released. It has been released with the help of UNEP, that is United Nations Environment Programme. In this, scientists have estimated the ozone hole to be filled by the year 2066. These estimates have been made for the ozone hole over Antarctica, while the hole over the Arctic is estimated to be filled by the year 2045, whereas in the rest of the world, the ozone hole is expected to fill up by the year 2040. According to scientists, the recovery of the ozone layer will be possible because of the 1989 Montreal Protocol. Because through the implementation of this protocol, some harmful industrial chemicals have been successfully eliminated. In this way, the ozone layer is expected to return to the level of the year 1980. Scientists have reported that about 99% of substances banned by the Montreal Protocol have now been phased out. As a result, a definite recovery of the ozone layer is becoming possible. However, it has been slow. Since the year 2000, there has been a gradual improvement in the area and depth of the ozone hole. In this way, there has been a significant improvement in the ozone layer in the upper stratosphere of the atmosphere. Because of this, there is also a reduction in the risk caused by harmful ultraviolet rays coming from the sun. For your information, let us tell you that ozone is a gas. It is found naturally in the atmosphere and the ozone layer is a thin part of the Earth's atmosphere. It absorbs almost all the harmful ultraviolet rays coming from the sun. It is present at a height of about 10 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. About 90% of ozone is found in the stratosphere. Significantly, the ozone hole is not technically a hole, but it is a region of an exceptionally thin ozone layer in the upper stratosphere. This region itself is commonly called the ozone hole. Let us tell you that for the first time in the year 1974, Sherwood Rowland and Mario Molino indicated that chlorofluorocarbon gas is reducing the concentration of the stratosphere. Recently, a controversy related to Parisnath Hill has come to the fore. Although earlier this dispute was between the central government and the Jain community, but the dispute has assumed a widespread form due to the tribals getting involved in this dispute. While the Jain community claims that Parasnath Hill and its Samit Peak as their religious site, the tribal people claim it to be Marangburu. At the same time, they are demanding the central government to declare their site as Marangburu site. The word Marangburu in the tribal language is used for their supreme deity. Actually, in the year 2019, the central government declared this holy hill as an eco-sensitive zone. After this, the Jharkhand government issued a notification declaring this area as an eco-tourism area. The Jain community protested strongly on this. They argued that if this area was declared as an eco-tourism area, then liquor and non-vegetarian activities would start here and it was against their faith. Therefore, they are also demanding to recognize it as a religious place, but the tribals have opposed this demand. In fact, in order to worship Marangburu, animals are sacrificed, which is an essential part of their worship. Hence, the tribals are opposing it. The government cancelled its ecotourism decision after protests in several states including Delhi and Rajasthan, apart from Jharkhand. At the same time, the tribal community has been continuously demanding to free the area from Jains. Significantly, Samit Shikharji is situated on the Parasnath Hill in Giridhi district of Jharkhand. The hill is named after Parasnath, the 23rd Tirthankara of the Jains. It is believed that 20 out of 24 Tirthankaras of Jainism had attained Nirvana, that is, salvation, over here. Therefore, it is one of the holiest places for Jains. According to experts, the footprints of Jain Tirthankaras are also present here. Also, some of the temples here are more than 2,000 years old. Recently, Union Home Minister Sri Amit Shah inaugurated a statue of a polo player in Manipur. This statue has been installed at the Marging Polo Complex in the Imphal district of Manipur. According to reports, the height of the statue is 122 feet. It depicts a polo player sitting on a Manipuri pony. In a tweet made in this context, the Home Minister said that this will definitely give a boost to the legacy of Sagol Kangji or the game of polo. This will inspire the youth of Manipur towards sports. Manipur hosts many polo tournaments at the international, national and state levels. 
According to the Home Minister, the Marking Polo Complex has been developed as a way of conserving the Manipur pony. On the other hand, in this case, some people say that more than building a complex, there is a need to make concerted efforts to save and protect the habitat of the Manipuri pony. For your information, let us tell you that the origin of this modern polo game is believed to be from the indigenous game Sagol Kangje of Manipur. In this, players play the game while riding horses. In this, players ride Manipuri pony. This information is based on a record from the 14th century. According to a legend, the deity king Kangba of Manipur is credited with its invention in the 14th century BC. The first organized Sagol Kangje match was held in 33 AD under the orders of another Manipuri king, Nongda Pakanga. Since then, the game remained an integral part of Manipuri culture for centuries. Significantly, the Imphal Polo Ground was recorded as the oldest polo ground in the Guinness Book of Records in the year 1991. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the origin of the game of polo can be traced to Manipur. At the same time, Manipuri Pony is one of the five recognized horse breeds in India. It has a powerful cultural significance for Manipuri society. According to one source, the Manipuri Pony originated from crossbreeding between Mongolian and Arabian horse breeds in some manuscripts. It is referred to as Mangalsa, that is Mangal-like or Mongolian animal. In Manipur mythology, the Manipuri Pony is considered one of the garden deities of Manipur. It is also worshipped in a temple there. Recently, Defence Minister Sri Rajnath Singh presided over the Roundtable Conference of Ambassadors for Aero India 2023. The event was organised by the Department of Defence Production, Ministry of Defence in New Delhi, Ambassadors and High Commissioners of more than 80 countries including top officials of the Defence Department participated in this outreach programme. Through this, the Defence Minister invited Defence and Aerospace companies from various countries to participate in Aero India. Aero India has been recognized by the Defence Minister as a leading global aviation trade fair. He said that this event will provide an opportunity to various countries to showcase their aerospace and defence products and technologies. Let us tell you that Aero India is a biennial air show, that is, aviation exhibition. It is also Asia's largest air show programme. Its 14th edition is proposed to be held from February 13 to 17 at the Yelahanka Air Force Station in Bengaluru. Its theme has been kept the runway to a billion opportunities. According to experts, this program will be organized by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Significantly, this program was started in the year 1996. Its key events this year include Defence Minister's Conference Speed and a CEO Roundtable. In recent years, India has emerged as a major defence exporting country. India's defence exports have increased almost eight times in the last five years. Presently, India is exporting defence products to more than 75 countries. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched ABP, that is Aspirational Block Program. It aims to improve the performances of backward blocks on various development parameters. This initiative was announced in the budget of 2022-23. Significantly, this program is based on the lines of Aspirational District Program, which was launched in the year 2018. This program was implemented in 112 districts across the country. According to experts, the ABP program will be initially implemented in 50 blocks of 31 states and union territories. These blocks have been identified on the basis of the recommendations of a four-member committee constituted by the government. More than half of these blocks are from six states. In these blocks, 68 are in Uttar Pradesh, 61 in Bihar, 42 in Madhya Pradesh, 34 in Jharkhand, and 29 each in Odisha and West Bengal. However, states have the flexibility to include other blocks in the program later. Let us tell you that Niti Aayog, along with the states, will release a quarterly ranking of these blocks on the basis of the performance of development indicators including health, education and nutrition. The first ranking is likely to be released in April this year. The government has given the flexibility to states to include other indicators based on their requirement. Recently, SASY that is, Social Awareness Society for Youth published a report. This report is based on the status of implementation of PEMSR, the Prohibition of Employment as Manual Scavengers and the Rehabilitation Act 2013. For this, the organization studied 21 cases related to incidents of manual scavenging, sewer tank deaths, caste-based discrimination against sanitation workers in government schools in Tamil Nadu, 
in the year 2021-22. It found that most of the people involved in manual scavenging belong to the scheduled caste. In these, FIR was registered in 15 cases. Surprisingly, only six of these cases were registered under the PEMSR Act. According to the National Commission for Safai Karamcharis, 989 people died while cleaning sewage tanks at the national level in the last 29 years. Inadequate safety measures and lack of technical support have been cited as reasons. The report recommended effective monitoring by the local government to prevent the deaths. Along with this, the need for bio-toilets has been emphasized to prevent such deaths. Manual scavenging is the cleaning of human waste by hands or carrying it on the head. Article 46 of the Constitution empowers the government to make provisions to stop this practice. Let us tell you that the PEMSR Act was passed in the year 2013. Its purpose is to stop the practice of manual scavenging. It includes provisions related to prohibiting hazardous manual cleaning of sewers and septic tanks. It is considered as a cognizable and non bailable offence under the Act. The Act made the states responsible for identifying manual scavengers and taking measures for their rehabilitation. Let us now look at the five questions based on the bulletin. Questions for this series are First question is Consider the following statements. 1. Kukichin National Army is a rebel group. 2. This group emerged in the year 2008. 3. The Kukichin community originates from Chinese descent. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 2 only or all of the above. Next question is with reference to the Kilauea volcano, consider the following statements. 1. This volcano is located in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park in the Hawaiian Islands of America. 2. The western and northern slopes of this volcano meet with another major volcano, Etna. 3. It is an active volcano. Which of the above statements is or are correct? 1 and 3 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 2 only or all of the above. Next question is, consider the following statements. 1. The tribals use the word Marang Buru for their supreme deity. 2. In the year 2019, the central government declared Parasnath Hill as an eco-sensitive zone. 3. Parasnath Hill is named after Parasnath, the 23rd Tirthankar of the Jains. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 2 only or all of the above. Next question is, consider the following statements with respect to the aspirational block program. 1. It aims to improve the performance of backward blocks on various development parameters. 2. This program is based on the lines of the aspirational district program. 3. 500 blocks in 31 states and union territories have been covered under the program. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 only, 2 and 3 only. 1 and 2 only or all of the above. Last question is, in which of the following state is the Paigaha tomb located? Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka or Delhi? Recently, DRDO successfully tested the ballistic missile Prithvi-2. The test was conducted from the integrated test range Chandipur located off the Odisha coast. Prithvi-2 is an indigenously developed short-range surface-to-surface ballistic missile. It has been developed by DRDO, that is Defense Research and Development Organization, under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. This program was started in 1982-83 under the leadership of the late APJ Abdul Kalam, who was the President of India. According to the Defense Ministry, the Prithvi-2 missile is an integral part of India's nuclear deterrence. Significantly, this missile was tested for the first time in the year 1996. After this, in the year 2003, it was included in the Indian Armed Forces. Recently, the 14th edition of World Spices Congress was organized. This two-day conference has been organized in the city of Mumbai, Maharashtra. Its purpose is to promote the international trade of Indian spices. Along with this, it also aims to create new opportunities for the Indian spice trade. 
India is called the bowl of spices. On the other hand, Maharashtra is one of the leading states in the production of spices in India. This is the reason why Mumbai has been chosen as the venue. Significantly, most of the spice trade in India takes place during the last quarter of the year. Recently, Startup India Innovation Week has been started. It is being organized by the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Its objective is to promote entrepreneurship and innovation across the country. Through this, the aim is to reach out to the stakeholders and supporters of the startup ecosystem across the country. In this knowledge sharing sessions are being organized for aspiring entrepreneurs. Stakeholders of the startup ecosystem such as government officials, corporates and investors are being included in these sessions. Recently, a new method of coating corrosion-resistant nickel alloy has been developed. It has been developed by the International Center for Advanced Research and Autonomous Research and Development Institute under the Department of Science and Technology. This method is able to replace the environmentally hazardous chrome coating. Let us tell you that this method consists of an environment-friendly electrolyte consisting of nickel and tungsten ions. These electrolytes are sources of strengthening tungsten and nickel. Recently, an endemic species have been recited after more than 120 years near Udhag Mandalam in Tamil Nadu. This species is endemic to the western ghats belonging to a family of rove beetles. It belongs to the genus Moniardis andrivesi. It was first mentioned in the year 1903. Let us tell you that two other species of Moniardis are also found in India. However, the exact geographical locations of these have not been identified. Recently, Google made a doodle to honor Fatima Sheikh on her birthday. It was Fatima Sheikh's 192nd birthday. She was born on 9 January 1831. She was a 19th century social reformer from Maharashtra. She is known as the first Muslim woman teacher of modern India. She was a strong supporter of girls' education. She worked as an associate of Savitri Bai and Jyoti Rao Phule. Recently, Kerala was declared the first state in the country to enable digital banking in eligible accounts. Its formal announcement has been made by Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan. According to the State Level Bankers Committee, all banking accounts in Kerala now have at least one digitally enabled product. And in 2021, Thrissur became the first district in the state to implement full digital banking. Thrissur district achieved this milestone under the Reserve Bank of India's expansion and deepening of the digital payments ecosystem scheme. Recently, Henle Passport Index 2023 was released. Japan has secured the first position in this. This means that Japan's passport is the most powerful in the world. The Japanese passport allows visa-free travel to 193 countries around the world, while Singapore and South Korea both are in second place. With their passport, 192 countries can be visited without a visa. India has got 85th place in this. Indian passport allows visa-free travel to 59 countries of the world. Significantly, in the year 2022, India achieved 87th rank. Recently, a bird census was done by Gohati Wildlife Division. This census was done in the Deepore Bill wetland situated at the southwestern end of Gohati. In this, 26,747 birds belonging to 96 species have been recorded. According to the Wildlife Division, the total waterfall species counted this time are 30 more than the last time. After February 2022, this is the second such counting. Last time, 10,289 birds belonging to 66 species were recorded. For your information, let us tell you that the poor bill is a Ramsar site of Assam. It is the only Ramsar site in Assam. It is known as an important area for birds. It is a freshwater lake in Assam, but due to encroachment, its area is continuously decreasing. Recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the Ganga River cruise from Varanasi. It has been started with the aim of promoting tourism in India. Through this, one can travel from Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh to Dibdu Gad in Assam. The total travel duration of this cruise will be 51 days and it will cover a distance of about 3,200 kilometers. It will pass through 27 river systems during the journey. According to the news, this is the longest river cruise in the world.